I've been trying to grow my hair out for 12 years. After starting from scratch multiple times, I'm now finally seeing results longer and even slightly thicker hair. But after years of avoiding heat, literally splitting hairs to avoid breaking my hair, doing slick back hairstyles only once a month, and sacrificing pool time and beach time to avoid water damage. In my head, I expected my hair would look something like this, but instead it looks something like this. Nothing wrong with what it looks like right now. I just expected better results. Results. And it got me thinking, why? Why is it that some girls can not touch their hair at all, use heat, not even get it trimmed, and their hair will still grow out extremely long, thick, and beautiful, literally my dream hair, while girls like me treat hair care like a second job, and it still doesn't really look that good. So let's talk about it while I get ready for the pool, because apparently there is a whole science to it. In this video, I'm mainly going to talk about the science of hair growth, hair loss, how to know if your hair is thinning, or if it's just naturally thin and kind of roughly what to do about it so we can understand our genetic hair composition a little bit better and how to maximize your genetic potential. So the hair grows in four stages. Think about one single strand of hair. If you were to isolate the follicle, it goes through four stages of hair growth. Stage one is the antigen or growth phase, like where the hair is literally getting longer. This phase can last on average two to seven years and it's mainly dependent on your genetics. <laughs> so if the hair grows on average about half an inch to one inch every month. So for you, for example, if your antigen phase only lasts two years genetically and your hair grows at a rate of one inch per month, you genetically can grow your hair 12 inches maximum and no more than that. Whereas somebody might genetically be able to grow their hair for seven years in the antigen phase and grow like two inches of hair a month. So you can do the math on how much longer their hair can genetically get compared to yours. And honestly, there's not much you can do to influence the antigen growth phase because supplements are not going to change it. Just massaging your hair is not going to change it. Shampoos are not going to change it. There are some peptides that have been shown to potentially prolong the antigen phase. I'm going to put the names of those peptides on screen so you can look for hair serums and shampoos that contain these peptides. There are some really good drugstore ones like the Ordinary Hair Serum. I'm currently trying that out. I have not really seen results yet, but it hasn't been long enough. I'm not not sponsored by The Ordinary, so it's going to be a fully honest review. But again, we're mostly talking about genetics here. After the hair stops growing, it doesn't immediately fall out. So once your antigen full genetic potential is achieved, the hair doesn't immediately shed. It actually goes into the catagen phase, which is the transition phase. It's a very short and only lasts a couple of weeks. And this is when the hair is preparing to move into the next part of the cycle, which is the resting phase, aka the telogen phase. Oh my god, I just have a horrible knot here. I'm so sorry. But the telogen resting phase is actually super interesting. This is where your follicle kind of lays dormant and the hair stays at the same length, but it's not falling out of your head yet. The interesting part about it is that it actually lasts two to three months before the follicle actually becomes loose and then you pull it out while brushing your hair or showering during the exogen or shedding phase. At any normal time in your life without like extra stress or anything, about 85% of your hair is in the growth phase. Well, about 10 to 15% of the hair is in the resting phase, so prior to the shedding phase. And during any normal time, you should be shedding somewhere between 50 to 150 hairs per day. It really depends on how much hair you have on your head. But sometimes you're going to notice more than average shedding, which can be normal. The scalp can kind of go through its own cycles throughout the year. So sometimes you can notice increased hair shedding. For a lot of women, this happens during the fall. So it's easy to remember in the fall, you have more hair fall, but it's not really a rule. But you can also go through times of stress that are going to increase your hair shed such as a big life event or pregnancy that can really change your hormones, increase stress levels. And these big life changes are going to lead to increased hair shed, but not right away. So remember how the resting phase of the hair lasts two to three months. What happens during increased stress is the hair doesn't just immediately fall out. Instead, the antigen phase gets significantly shortened. So the hair is pushed into the resting phase prematurely, and then it takes an extra two to three months for that hair to shed. 
said. So if you go through stress right now, it's actually going to take two to three months for you to notice significantly increased hair shed from that stress, which does sound a little scary if you think about it, because you're never really going to know if your stressful period will influence your hair or not until several more months go by. So if you're noticing increased shed right now, ask yourself, did anything happen two to three months ago that could have potentially influenced this? And don't freak out. Usually hair shed like this, if it's just increased, like you're not seeing bald patches or like severe thinning in your hairline, usually it does resolve itself on its own when the stress stops and then a couple more months go by. But what if your shedding does not resolve itself? They say that by the time you actually notice you're losing hair, up to 50% of your hair could already be gone. That doesn't have to happen if you know what signs to look out for and immediately understand that you're experiencing hair loss, not just normal hair shed. The problem is that if you google am i losing hair it's going to give you a list of kind of generic things that are very hard to really pinpoint for example it's going to tell you to look out for a widening part or being able to see your scalp or feeling like your ponytail is thinner but for someone like me who has thin fine hair naturally i can already see my scalp i promise you i am not losing hair this is my natural state i was born like this i have a thin part i can see my scalp my ponytail is thin so for a very long time i was constantly stressing like am i losing hair is my hair shed normal am i going to go bald or is this just normal and i found kind of a really easy test that you can do it's not foolproof but it generally works honestly i saw this on tiktok but basically if you pull on your hair like this and you kind of pull out one to two hairs that's normal especially if you just brush your hair maybe you won't even pull anything out like me but if you keep kind of pulling on your hair so just like gently tugging like this and you pull out a couple of hairs and then you do it again and then you pull out a couple more hairs i'm just pulling out one at a time but if you're seeing multiple hairs at a time and if you keep pulling out more and more hair, 10 hairs, 15 hairs at a time, then you're possibly experiencing more hair shed than normal and it might be a cause for concern. But if you're not pulling out a ton of hair, but you can still see your scalp, then you probably don't have thinning hair, you just have naturally thin hair. So there is a very interesting difference between someone who has naturally thick hair and thin hair. You can really see it on the scalp. I'm gonna put up a picture. This is what a thick hair scalp looks like. Basically scalp with high density hair follicles. See how when you zoom in on the hair follicles you can see these clusters of hair that's multiple hairs growing from a single follicle with thick hair you can easily spot clusters of three or even four now look at a low density scalp this scalp is by yours truly see how most of the follicles only have one or two hairs per follicle honestly if i'm lucky it's two i couldn't even find one with three let alone four so i recommend if you're on a hair growth journey and you suspect hair thinning take a close-up picture of your scalp on natural light with the front camera take a picture part your hair like this because your part is usually the thinnest so like part your hair like here or the back of the head or even the sides where thinning commonly occurs and take a picture and really note the state of your follicles how many hairs do you have per follicle how thick are they and save that picture in a couple weeks from now take a new picture and combine the pictures. What happens when you are experiencing hair loss is the follicles start shrinking in size. So that means two things. One, instead of growing three or four hairs, if you had thick hair, it might only be two or one. So the follicle is reducing in size. And in addition to that, the hair itself, the thickness of the hair itself is getting smaller. So you will notice that even at the root, the hair is getting thinner. So if you do that and you notice that your hair is actually thinning, what do you you do step one is going to be see a certified trichologist if you can or even your general doctor because you have to get some blood work done hair loss is often hormonal not all the time but often which means you're going to see changes in your hormone levels usually it's your thyroid or testosterone levels that impact hair growth but it can also be a nutrient deficiency like iron or biotin are the most common ones that cause hair loss there's a million potential causes for hair loss. These are just some of the most common ones and the most common blood markers that you should be checking. But your doctor will be able to evaluate it properly and give you the most adequate treatment. Step two is make sure you are washing your hair properly. I'm so guilty of this right now. I haven't washed my hair in multiple days. But an oily scalp makes it really hard to grow hair, especially if you're already experiencing hair loss. Your follicles are shrinking. Your hairs are getting thinner. It's really important to be clearing out that buildup and creating a healthy 
healthy environment for your hair to grow. I just posted a hair wash tutorial as my last video, so you can go check that out. Use a mild shampoo. Look for something that does not have sulfates. I also love shampoos that have caffeine and rosemary. Those shampoos are always formulated for hair loss. They're gonna be super gentle on your scalp. They're amazing. And then step three is be very gentle with your scalp. <laughs> do not do slick back hairstyles like I'm doing right now. You want to wear very gentle hairstyles that are not gonna pull on your hair, wear your hair in braids. Use UV protection. I don't really like scalp sunscreens. I feel like they clog the follicles for me personally at least. So I just prefer wearing a hat. And step four, easier said than done, but minimize your stress, girl. <laughs> if you start stressing about your hair shed, you could just be adding more stress and making it even worse a couple months from now. One last thing I wanna address is do not think that minoxidil is going to be a magical solution if you suspect hair loss. Minoxidil primarily works by increasing blood flow to your scalp and potentially prolonging the antigen phase. But if your hair loss is due to something like low biotin or low iron levels, more blood flow is not necessarily going to help because your blood does not contain the iron that your hair needs. So the minoxidil is not necessarily going to do much. If you have androgenic alopecia, which is related to the hormone DHT, minoxidil is also not really going to help. You still have DHT in your bloodstream and your hair is still falling out because of it. So typically hair loss requires a very complex treatment approach if you are going through it. That's why I cannot emphasize enough how much you need to see a professional. Getting to the root cause, pun intended, is extremely important. Let me know if you want to see an in-depth video breaking down more of the most common hair loss causes and potential treatments. I am a trichologist student right now, not certified yet on my way though, but I love talking about anything hair related and science related. So if you want more videos like this, comment below what you want to see more of and follow for more tips to grow your fine, thin, or thinning hair. I'm gonna go to the pool now. Bye!